Hey everyone, Kelly here. I'm back. Yeah, let's let's just move on. We know I've been gone for a while. Maybe you don't know, maybe you don't care. That's fine. I feel bad, but I mean, I feel bad for being away for so long, but I'm back now. So I thought since I've been away for a bit that I would just do a quick little wrap up of the rest of my summer. So July and August, my highs and lows of what I read, what I loved, what I didn't love. Yeah. So before I get into that, I just want to remind everyone to please like and subscribe below if you like the content I bring you and let's get started. So like I've said in several videos past, my July was crazy, crazy busy because I was in a musical and then I helped produce a show at the beginning of August right after the show closed the show that I was in closed. So I didn't read a lot in July, but I read a couple things that I was really, really happy about. So in July, I read seven books, which is not bad, but I mean, I've read a lot more this month, but I'll get into that in a sec. <laughs> so in July, I read three comic books, which normally I don't read. So that was something new and fun for me. Two of the three I really enjoyed, and the third one I did not enjoy. So at least with comic books, it only cost like $2 for like the little, is it a periodical? I guess so, yeah, a little periodical. So I, yeah, I didn't really like the third one, but that's okay. I'm not too mad about it. So the two that I really enjoyed were Extraordinary Number no. One by V.E. Schwab and Norse Mythology Number no. One, but I think it's volume two, like it's the newest volume of Norse Mythology comics by Neil Gaiman and P. Craig Russell. I have them upstairs somewhere, but I was too lazy to grab them. So I'll just put the photos there as you can see. But yeah, I really enjoyed Extraordinary. It's, I believe, a prequel of sorts to V. E. Schwab's novel Vicious, which I have, but I have not read. Yeah, story of my life. <laughs> but I really enjoyed it. I thought the artwork was wonderful. I thought considering you only have like maybe 30 pages of story, it was really well done. I really enjoyed it. I gave it a four to five. Norse mythology was the same thing for me. I gave it a four to five. It is a Norse myth that you're learning about. So it's not really... Neil Gaiman's own story, but it's how he presents it. So I really, really enjoyed it. I learned a lot because I don't know a lot about Norse mythology. I know way more about Greek mythology. And even then there's so much of it that I'm not an expert, okay? <laughs> but I enjoyed it. I thought the artwork was very nice. I definitely enjoyed the artwork in Extraordinary more, but that's just me. I probably would keep reading those two However, I think I'm going to wait until I until they release like the bigger volumes with all the periodicals together because it's expensive. And also, I just I'm not the type of person to go back into the comic book store every week looking for the little edition or the new release of that week. So that's just me. So I would probably buy the bigger volume once they've compiled it all together and just read it in one sitting. But I really enjoyed those two. The comic I did not enjoy was The Worst Dudes, number one, by Aubrey Sitterson. <sighs> okay. <laughs> the cover, as you can see here, because I'm too lazy to grab it upstairs, I was like, okay, this looks kind of interesting. I've never heard of this. It's brand new. I'll give it a go. And it had a warning of, you know, they've got mature content, a lot of explicit language. So if you don't like that, don't pick it up. And I was like, okay, that's fine. Like I'm not, I'm not going to clutch the pearls about an F-bomb or, you know, like I just, I don't care. However, <laughs> I read it and I was like, this is just obscene to be obscene. And I don't like that personally, because for me, I think it's cheap. I find that with a lot of movies and plays nowadays too. People are just going willy nilly, like fuck this, fuck that blah, 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 excuse my French, if you don't like that word. But like, I just, to me, you have to earn it because if you just throw it in all the time, what's the point? And so this comic, I really did not like. The story was like, eh. I think they were trying to rescue some kind of 
heiress or princess of some planet if set in space. And I just did not like it. Some of the drawings were pretty cool, but then some of them I was like, Again, not that it was badly drawn, but just obscene to be obscene without a point of it all. So I was kind of like, okay. It felt like if you had a bunch of 12 year old boys who just learnt what sex was or what swearing was, if they made a comic. So if you like that, pick it up. I didn't enjoy it. I gave it a one out of five. Um, the one point in the comic that I really enjoyed <laughs> was there was a character, I believe, his name was Trap Man, and was it Trap Man? I think so. But he was literally just a bunch of trap muscles made into like a big kind of bodybuilding form or bodybuilder form of just a bunch of trap muscles. So I thought that was kind of funny and clever. A little weird, but that's okay. But yeah, I really, not for me. So I'm not going to continue that one. And then the rest of my July, were romance novels, which is fine. But I really, I read three comics and then four romances and that was it. Comics took, the comics took me like maybe 20 minutes to 40 minutes each. I really didn't read that much in July. It's just how it happened, how <laughs> it played out. But in terms of the romances, I had some really good reads that I'm excited to share with you. So first of all, I reread The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. I've already talked about this in several videos. I will link it above or below, both, whatever. Really love this one. Five out of five. I gave it five out of five this time. I think last time I gave it a four out of five or four and a half. And I reread it and I was like, what was I thinking? Because this is amazing to me. I love it. I love it so much. I love Stella. I love Michael. Helen, I love you. Okay, please keep it up because I love it. So five out of five, wonderful experience. And I reread it because I wanted to get hyped and ready for the newest and the last installment of this trilogy, which is The Heart Principle, which I'll put here because it, at the time of this recording, it's not out yet, but it's out tomorrow and I will be buying it tomorrow because I need to read it for myself and also for the podcast. So, so excited. Then I read The Bride Test by Helen Huang, which I'll put here because I own it and I don't know where it is. It must be upstairs or maybe I lent it out to a friend. Hmm. If you have it, can I have it back? <laughs> Thanks. So I gave The Bride Test three and a half. I still enjoyed the book, but not as much as The Kiss Quotient. And I think it's because I just didn't get enough of the inner workings of the narrator. So in the Kiss Quotient, we get a lot of Stella's inner thoughts. And it's not that we don't get a lot of Kai's inner thoughts, but he's very, very logical, analytical. He does not have emotions really, which is fine. But I was missing what Stella brought to this book. So while I still enjoyed the story, it just didn't do it as much for me as The Kiss Quotient did. It definitely was not as steamy as The Kiss Quotient, not at all, which is fine. And I think I had heard that going into it, so I wasn't super disappointed by that. But again, I just, I didn't feel as connected to Kai or to his love interest, who I forget her name now, oh my god. But yeah, so it was good, but not my favorite. I would still recommend reading it because it's part of the world, part of the overarching story. And also, let me just say, <laughs> Quan in this book, I love Quan. I'm so excited for his book coming out soon, tomorrow. I'm so excited to read it. I have high hopes for it, I'm not gonna lie. So I hope it doesn't let me down because I've been so excited for this for a long time. But I thought um, Helen Huang did a really good job of incorporating Quan through not only the Kiss Quotient, but then the Bride Test because she set him up perfectly for his own novel, The Heart Principle. However, Stella and Michael, Stella was just mentioned in brief, brief passing moments of like, oh yeah, she's getting married to Michael. 
Michael was on the phone with Kai for like one time and then he was at the wedding, his own wedding. Um, I don't know. I just thought I pay attention to how characters are incorporated into like the next book of the series, even if it's not their story. I look at that. So for me, it was a little bit of a throwaway, whereas Quan was like pretty heavily featured in the first two books. And now it's he's going to have his own book. So that was a little drawback for me of like, I feel like you set up these two really great characters of Stella and Michael and we came to love them. And then you just kind of like threw them away for me. But, you know, I gave it a three and a half out of five. I still really enjoyed it, but it just didn't give me all of the nice, warm, fuzzy feelings like the Kiss Quotient did. And I'm hoping the Heart Principle will. So yeah, the last book I read, <laughs> I read for the podcast, which I'm probably going to have to reread it before we record because I read it way too early. I thought they... Okay, I read it because I thought my co-hosts, Tilly and Nikki, were also going to read it like in the summer when we had more time. <laughs> Who has, I don't know, we never have time, but anyways, no one does. But, so I read it. I read Ice Planet Barbarians, number one by Ruby Dixon, because we're doing a little mini uh, shot episode, we're calling it, on BYOB. And it was not for me. I mean, I knew what I was getting into going into it everyone's calling it alien porn great <laughs> I gave it a two out of five because it's not the worst thing I've read but I was just it's not for me I'm sorry I know it's huge on book talk and I'm glad that people are enjoying themselves you read what you want to read but it, it didn't do it for me uh content warning for that book it begins with a very icky graphic scene of sexual assault and it's not like the first page or anything but it's very close to the beginning it's not the protagonist but she's witnessing it i don't want to go into too much details basically there's aliens they abduct these girls they the ship crashes on some icy planet and of course the first alien barbarian guy who meets the protagonist is like she is the one we must mate and have alien babies and blah, blah, blah. And it's, oh my God, it is not for me. Mom, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't read that one. It was really weird. Um, Yeah, and then for most of the book, they didn't speak the same language because how could they? We have a human from America, of course, because it's an American writer, I believe. And then you have an alien who doesn't speak English clearly because why would he they he I don't know why would the alien speak English you know so half the book we had we had them trying to communicate and it was just like a lot for my brain because yeah I understand you're not gonna understand each other but reading it was not fun it was not fun to be like great they can't understand each other great you know I don't know not for me two out of five enjoy if you want so I actually read another book in July totally forgot I'm looking at my reading journal and I just blanked but I read the x talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon I really loved this oh my god this was on my most anticipated reads list at the beginning of the year and I bought it a while ago and then just never got around to it wow cat hair it's everywhere but I'm so glad I did because it was so much fun and I just felt so like, oh, just heart warmed. And I thought it was really cool to read about two people on the radio because we don't have a lot of books like that, I feel like, or it's not talked about a lot because I think a lot of people, you know, they want to do YouTube or they want to do movies or visual mediums or bigger, flashier mediums. And I just thought this was really sweet to have a protagonist who just really loved NPR growing, growing up, really loved NPR growing up and had this shared passion for radio with her dad who passed away. And of course we have a hate to love trope here, which I love. <laughs> I don't hate, I love. 
So yeah, I really enjoyed this one. I thought there were some funny moments, some really heartwarming moments. I would really recommend this. I don't remember, I don't think this was very steamy. It's been a while since I read it. So, I mean, it was just July last month. <sighs> what is time? I don't know. I don't remember if this was steamy. I don't think it was because there's other books I'm going to talk about that I'm like, yes, that was steamy. I don't remember if this really was, but I still really loved it. I loved the dynamics between Shay and Dominic, the two people on the cover here. And I thought the conflict was a very good, real conflict and not some silly, dramatic thing we need to throw in in the third act. I really enjoyed it. So I would really, really recommend this read, especially if you love uh, The Kiss Quotient. I would pick this up because it was just so good. It was so well done. And yeah, pick it up. Give it a shot. Now getting into my August reads. I read a lot of books this month. However, I read a lot of short romance kind of fluff things. And I'm not going to go into all the books I read because some of them, they were just not, I don't know. They weren't great and they weren't bad. Like, I just feel like I have nothing to say about them. So I'm just not going to, honestly. And because I don't want this video to be like 50 minutes long. So whatever. I had some really great reads, some reads that I was like, Ugh. and I also had an amazing read that I'm really excited to talk about. So let's just dive right into August. The first book I'm going to talk about that I read in August was actually an old book that I had seen around growing up, but I never read it and I didn't know anyone personally who had read it. So I was always curious, but kind of scared to pick it up. So my new friend here, Kathleen, she lent it to me and I loved it. I, it took me a little bit to get into it, but then I think like 50 pages in, I was sucked right in and I had to keep going until I finished. And that book is Cinder by Marissa Mayer. Meyer? I'm gonna say Mayer, by Marissa Mayer. I loved it. I'm kind of bummed that I waited this long to read it because I think I would have really, really enjoyed it when I was younger, when it came out. But I'm happy I read it now. I gave it a four and a half out of five. At first I was leaning towards a four, but then it was like two or three hours after I had read it and written my little review on Goodreads. And I was still thinking about it. I was still thinking about how much fun I had reading it, what happened in the book. So I was like, no, 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 I'm gonna give it a four and a half out of five. The reason why I did not give it a five is because it was a little slow for me at the beginning but then it picked up and I was like, wow, I love this. I'm here for it. So Cinder is a sci-fi reimagining of Cinderella. And it is definitely the most inventive fairy tale retelling I've ever read. And definitely of Cinderella because we always get the same old, you know, rags to riches, nobody to a princess thing because that's the story, right? But in Cinder, we have a mechanic who is a cyborg and cyborgs are not really accepted in the society that she lives in and she has to hide her identity and not in the way that they normally hide Cinderella's identity in Cinderella. Like she just didn't want anyone to know that she was a cyborg, basically. Like everyone knew who she was. They knew she was a mechanic. They knew her name. The prince that she meets very early on brings an old droid is that what it is i think a droid to her to fix and so like they know each other very early on in the book it's not like who is this mysterious woman i met ages ago we need to find her no it was just they didn't know that she was a cyborg because she didn't want anyone to know and i don't want to give away the whole plot because there's a lot of really interesting things that go on but i i do have to say the way they did the iconic ball moment. Wow, I really enjoyed that. They, they, It was a new fun take on the whole, we gotta rush Cinderella to the ball and she's only got until midnight 
And you know the moment I'm talking about when Cinderella is up on the top of the staircase and everyone stops and looks at her and she's beautiful in this nice blue gown. And it was not like that in this book. And I won't tell you what happens because it is very late in the book. So if I tell you, I'm gonna ruin the majority of what happens in this book. But the way it was done was so clever, so unique, so original. I loved it. I have already borrowed the next book in the series, which is Scarlet from my friend Kathleen. I have not started it yet, but I will because I'm really interested to see how this plays out because each book centers on a different fairy tale character, but it's all in the same world. So I'm excited and I'll let you know what I think when I read the next one. I will say another thing. Um, I read a review on Goodreads. I'll put who wrote it when I edit because I don't have it in front of me right now. But everything that she said about Cinder, I was like, wow, I agree a hundred thousand million percent because it was just like, wow. Cinder, I would say if someone asked me to explain it in a couple words, I would say it's like Sailor Moon meets comic book superhero meets fairy tale. I loved it. I loved it. Sailor Moon. God, do I miss Sailor Moon. Oh my God. Pick it up, please. If you haven't, I was very surprised. And I think it's also because the covers, when they first came out, the treatment of the covers were very similar to Twilight. And as I grew older, I did not like Twilight. I read that when I was younger and I loved it. And then once I got to university, I was like, wow, I hate it. I hate this. Why did I enjoy it so much? So then I looked at Cinder and thought, it's going to be like that, which in my opinion, it was not. There is romance in the book, but it's so slight and minimal. It's really about the action and the plot, which I thought was great. And some things, some things I guessed right away, I, there were, I think there was only one surprise for me in the book, but I wasn't bothered by it because I had so much fun reading it that I didn't care. And that's why I, I think it's kind of like a comic superhero sort of story in a way, because there's all these tropes and stereotypes in comic book hero, star, comic book hero, in comic book superhero stories. Like we know good guy, bad guy, they're gonna win. There's gonna be this, there's gonna be that. We know all the ingredients, but the pie at the end of it tastes great so we don't care we will go we will we'll get through all those ingredients we already know to get to that lovely pie so what a weird metaphor but I really enjoyed it four and a half out of five pick it up the next book I want to talk about is the first book that we read for this upcoming season of bring your own book our podcast and we have a very special guest coming on with us that we have not announced yet so I will not but I will say that she is a pretty popular booktuber with a very lovable fur baby who we all know and love. And yeah, she's American living abroad. That's what I will say. So the book we read and discussed was Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Iamide. This is her debut novel and it was marketed as a YA thriller that was like Get Out meets Gossip Girl. And I gotta tell you, it really was Get Out meets Gossip Girl. <laughs> so the marketing was spot on. I gave it a four and a half out of five. I really enjoyed this. It was super stressful. Um, there were some things that I guessed sort of, but not 100% correctly. And I think it was because the marketing said it's like Get Out. So publishers, I know you're not watching this <laughs> because like, why would you be? But you kind of ruined that, you know? And I still really enjoyed the book, but I think you need to be a bit more clever with your marketing because I've seen Get Out, I loved it. I read this book. I knew right away a lot of the major plot points that were going to happen. So just saying. But like I'm also saying, I really enjoyed the ride. I thought that this was a very strong debut novel. She's already announced that she has another book coming out that's Dark Academia. And she had an alien emoji, which I'm like, are there aliens? Is this Ice Planet Barbarians? I hope not. In a school? I hope not. <laughs> I don't think it is. But I will read whatever she's putting out because 
I loved it. I thought it was a super, super strong debut novel. And her author's note at the end was so sweet. And I just really felt connected to her in that note because she was just so honest and open about her process writing this book. She said that she wrote it when she first started college, when she went away from where she grew up and she became like one of a handful of black people on campus and she would go like weeks at a time without seeing another black person. So she felt very isolated and it was not what she was used to growing up because she grew up in a very black community in England where she was. So I really appreciated her honesty and her story and the story that she wrote because it was insane at times. <laughs> like, oh my God. So, and I also loved that there were little tidbits in there that discussed race and racism, but it was not, it was not preachy and it was not like insert lesson here because that's not what this book was. This is a YA thriller. It's not a nonfiction and it's not her job to teach the, you know, dumb white person about this, right? So I enjoyed it. I will definitely read whatever she is putting out and yeah, I really, really recommend this one. It's intense. It's intense, but I thought she did some really, really great work at like taking, taking a few things that happen a lot in thrillers and twisting it just slightly to keep it fresh. Uh, for example. Hey, editing Kelly here. So I just want to say a quick sort of spoiler alert because I didn't really say that in the video that I'm editing and what I talk about in the video about Ace of Spades, I didn't think it really was a spoiler but because it happens pretty early on in the book, but it could be. So this is just me saying a little mini spoiler alert and I'll put um, a title on the screen so you can see when it ends, but yeah, just letting you know, sorry. At one point in the book, I guess I didn't really tell you what this book is about, eh? But basically you have a an anonymous person named Aces releasing very harmful gossip or information about the two main characters, Devon and Chiamaka. And it like just very, very quickly gets worse and worse and worse of the things that they are revealing to the entire school. And one of the things that was revealed was a, I don't want to say it was a sex tape because I don't think it was. At the very beginning, photos are released um, showing Devon and a man in a compromising position. Like they were definitely making out or about to have sex or, you know, something like that. And while it was very, very upsetting and hard to you know, like, that's just terrible to happen to anybody. But I appreciated that the author chose to make that moment happen to a man and not a woman. And it didn't end up being like, oh, this woman is promiscuous and a slut and blah, blah, blah. It was really about this coming out about a black man and about a black man being gay. That's what it was really talking about. So I thought that was a new interesting take on elements that happen a lot in thrillers. And so I really appreciated that. I didn't enjoy that part. That's not what I'm saying, but I appreciated the originality. So four and a half out of five, highly, highly recommend. Go grab it now. Okay, just a couple more books I wanna talk about. Hopefully I get through these quickly because this video is getting long. But okay, another book that I really enjoyed that I had my eyes on for a while was You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this book, I gave it a four to five and this was marketed as kind of like a uh, Jane the Virgin rom-com. And it totally was because it's about our two main characters here. Oh my God. Jasmine and Ashton. And they are cast in a new TV series that is a English American revamp or reboot of a very popular telenovela. So first of all, I love, love Jane the Virgin. I have not watched a lot of telenovelas, but I have watched quite a few 
English reboot remakes of telenovelas. Like I used to watch Ugly Betty all the time. I binge watched Jane the Virgin, loved that. There was another one they mentioned in here. I don't remember what it was, but I was like, oh my God, I didn't know that that was a telenovela originally. So yeah, I thought that was so interesting. And you can tell that the author loves this world and has spent a lot of time in this world. I don't know, I was reading her bio and it doesn't say anything about her working in TV, but I would be very surprised if she didn't because she had a lot of info that would lead me to believe that she has worked in TV in some way, like whether she's a producer or a writer, what have you. She had a lot of inside info that I was like, you must be in this industry. As an actor, theater, not TV film, whatever, you know, there's a lot of things in here that I related to because we have two actors as our main characters. And it was just really fun for me to read because we had Jasmine trying to get to know Ashton better to make their on-screen chemistry work. And I have had that happen to me many times where you are trying to get some kind of rapport going with your scene partner and it's not happening. And the thing is in this book, Ashton was never like he was never mean to her. He was never rude intentionally, but he was very standoffish at the beginning and very to himself and shy. And some people are shy. That's fine. But when you're working in close quarters with someone and you need to show the world that you're in love on screen, in their case, you need to have some kind of a friendship, some kind of a rapport going on because otherwise it is so awkward and just Wow, the work suffers, okay? It's all about the work and the story. So she's trying to get to know him to make this work and he's very to himself and he's very closed off and we learn why through the book, but that's essentially how this starts. There was a scene with an intimacy director, which I loved because, and they mentioned this in the book, but intimacy direction is a very new field of work and it came from theater. And it is so overdue in theater, but also in TV and film, because an intimacy director is someone who's there to help the actors and directors and everyone really on set create, not create, well, yeah, create, to create moments that are called for in the script that are authentic, but safe, and that really lend to telling the story. So if you have a kiss, we have, like you would, hopefully now call in an intimacy director and choreograph the kiss because speaking from experience, I put this down for my hands, <laughs> but speaking from experience, I've only had to kiss, I think like two or three. Yeah. Two or three guys in plays or musicals so far in my career. And they have up until now, until the last show I did, which we did not have a kiss, but we had an almost kiss several times. Nothing was choreographed until this last show I was in this summer. And speaking from experience, being an actor who you just get thrown in and they're like, okay, kiss. What does that mean? And also it's not me kissing the actor because I want to kiss the actor. It's like the character I'm playing wants to kiss that character. So how do we make this look real, look like we actually want to be doing this and that we both feel comfortable because we don't want to touch someone the wrong way, whether it's like, maybe I have a thing with touching my shoulder. I don't want you to touch my shoulder. Well, how would they know if we never talk about it? So this had a moment like, um, not where someone crossed a boundary, but they just talked about that a little bit in this book. And I really appreciate it because I think a lot of people don't understand that, that choreographing intimate moments, whether it's a hug, a kiss, a more explicit moment, like maybe you were pretending to have sex. I've never had to do that so far, which I'm like, thank God. But you need to choreograph it. You can't just be like, go do it. It's like a dance. You would never be like, okay, go dance. It says dance, go dance. What do you mean go dance? Do you know how many different types of dances there are? Do you know how many different types of kisses there are? Just saying. So anyways, little actor, Sidebar there. This book, I really enjoyed. I gave it a four to five, like I said. However, I do feel like there was like 50 pages that could have been cut out just to make the story a little bit more streamlined because there was like a problem and then a solution and then another problem and then a solution. And I was like, okay, this could have been just more streamlined, but all right. 
There was a lot of um, Spanish in this book, which I really loved because I grew up with Spanish in the household. My parents are um, fluent in Spanish and also a couple other languages, but uh, or at least my dad is. But so I don't speak Spanish. I took it for a year in university, but um, I could understand almost everything that they were saying just because of growing up around hearing the Spanish language. And yeah, I thought that was really sweet and made it very natural. And yeah, uh, I will say the steamy moments. Wow. 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 The steamy moments didn't happen until maybe a third of the way in. So I was like, okay, is this gonna not be steamy? Because look at the cover. How can it not be steamy? Oh, they showed up and wow, did they ever. They were quite good. They were quite good, but it was also a very good story. So four to five, definitely, yeah, I had a lot of fun reading this and I'm excited to read the next one, which is about her cousin. So yeah. Okay, my second last book I'm going to talk about that I read this month was Guild by Raven Kennedy. Wow. So I read it on my Kobo because I've seen it all over Instagram and the cover was like kind of nice. So I was like, okay, let me give this a go. It looked like it was, I thought it was about Faye, but it was not. It was like a um, King Midas retelling, which I don't know much about King Midas. I just know that he's got the golden touch, whatever, right? Trust the Midas touch. Oh my God, the story was so bad. I ended up skimming through a bunch of it because I was like, what the hell is this? It was, <sighs> in my opinion, it was terribly written, okay? I'm just gonna say it. I thought it was awful. Um, I thought it was gonna be a steamy fantasy read. It was not, it was not steamy at all. There were a lot of mentions of, um, what would you call them? I don't know. I don't know if a concubine is what you would call them. I don't know. Basically a lady who is like a sex slave for the king, basically. There were a bunch of them in the book. I was like, okay, for King Midas and whoever visits him, I guess. Called saddles, like on a horse. I hated that. And every time they mentioned saddle, I was like, <clears throat> I hated that so much. <sighs> I'm getting chills right now because I'm just so like grossed out. Okay. And there were so many times in this book where the main character who I don't remember her name because I don't care. I don't even care to look it up. This is how much I did not enjoy this book. Okay. So many moments in this book where she was just like, oh no, am I going to be raped? I don't know. Let's wait and find out. And then she wasn't raped, thankfully. But I was like, what is this book? What? What is this book? And then she and a bunch of the other saddles got abducted or something. And then pirates were there. And I don't know. It was not for me. I gave it a one. And that's being very generous. Okay, because uh, I understand don't want to yuck anyone's yum, which I hate that expression also. So I'm going to yuck that yum as well. But <laughs> I just was like, really? Really? I know some people are into, you know, different fantasies or whatever, but this was not for me. And even if I had been into that idea, it was not done well. It was so poorly written. I was like, what? Wow, no thank you. <laughs> no thank you, next. The last book I wanna talk about is one that I had on my most anticipated reads list as well. So two of them I read this month. And I was so, so happy because I loved it. And that would be For the Wolf by Hannah Witten. So this is another debut novel and the cover is giving me a lot of Red Riding Hood vibes. I also annotated this one because it's, and it's deckled. I believe that's how they, what they call it, deckled edges. Um, I annotated it because I loved it right when I started it. I was like, I wanna remember this. Why? Is there so much cat hair? <sighs> Anyways, <coughs> the cover makes you think that's gonna be Red Riding Hood retelling. 
And I can tell you now that it is not. So if that's what you're hoping, it's not that, but I still really loved it. So the tagline on the back of this says, the first daughter is for the throne. The second daughter is for the wolf. So this is why I thought it was a Red Riding Hood retelling and also because of the cloak there. But this follows, oh my God, red. <laughs> I'm like blanking so much today. This follows a girl named Red and her full name is like Redaris or something, but they call her Red for short. Um, she is the second daughter and on her 19th birthday, she gets um, something called the Mark, which is like a little uh, green insignia of sorts that just like comes up in your veins. And it means that the, I was saying Wilderwood, kind of like Wildebeest, it might be a Wilderwood, but this place um, is a magical forest that centuries ago her ancestors made a bargain with. And so now because of that, every second daughter in the royal line has to go to the wolf. Like they are for the wolf and they're trying to like break this curse and all this stuff. So she doesn't want to go to the wolf, but she knows she has no other choice. So she goes and this is not a spoiler because it's in the synopsis, but the wolf is not a wolf. He's a man. Okay. Yes, he is. So <laughs> I really love this. I thought it was super atmospheric. I love creepy forest tales. This forest is alive and not well. Okay. <laughs> it is a well, okay, I was gonna say it's a nasty forest, but it's really not because one thing I really loved about this was the author Hannah Witten wrote several times that the forest was not good or bad. It was simply just existing the way it was meant to exist. So I really appreciate that because I think that is very important and a lot of people don't realize sometimes um, that certain things aren't good or bad, it just, is you know like how philosophical right but i really really love this it, it the world just sucked me in and i couldn't put this down i think i read this in like two days i annotated like crazy there were so many moments i loved um there is a slow burn romance which i also thoroughly enjoyed it is not steamy at all however it was not fade to black romance which i don't really like because for me, it's just like, okay, well then why did you go there if you're just going to fade to black on all the fun stuff, you know? So this, you don't really see a lot of the fun stuff or whatever, but the way it's written is so nice and it's so detailed that I did not care. It reminded me a bit of the Song of Achilles in not anything to do with the plot, but just how those moments were treated. Like it was very, very... um loving and detailed so even though we didn't have the whole steamy vibe or whatever we didn't have any explicit info um it was still really nice and I didn't feel like I was missing anything so yeah I would say you could definitely give this to like yeah I'd say like a 13 year old if they had like a good reading level comprehension because there are some things that I was like whoa this is a little detailed uh, in terms of the magic system, which I, I think I would like to reread this just to just to lock down some more info about the magic system because there's a lot that happens in this book with the magic and like she doesn't know how it works. The wolf is trying to tell her some things, but then doesn't want to tell her some things. So I would reread it just to like get more of that because I read it so quickly that I probably missed some info there. But I think you could give this to someone who's 13 who had a good reading level comprehension and they would love it and it would be appropriate for them. There were some bloody moments, some violent <laughs> things because of the the wilder wood or the wilder wood, but it wasn't anything too gory because I don't like gore and I was totally fine. And I think this is a duology, I hope. I hope it's not a trilogy because I just get I keep getting sucked into these series and I don't have time. I have so many series to finish. It's like, God, you know? Anyways, 
The second one comes out next summer, I believe, and I am so excited to read it because I loved this. I want my friends to read this because it was such a pleasant surprise. Well, I guess not a surprise because I was hoping it would be good, but it turned out differently than I thought it would and I still loved it. So if I was going to say it was any kind of retelling or reimagining, I would say it leans more towards Beauty and the Beast, but not in the way you think. It's not like, oh, we need to break the curse that he's under and he's transformed into a monster and we only have X one. No, like not really. It's there is a bit of a love story, but it's more a the story is more about the forest and the curse, not the curse, the bargain that was put upon the world really with this forest. So yeah, I guess I would say it's sort of beating the beast, but not not blatantly so because yeah i really loved this i hope more people pick this up because i think she's an indie author maybe not it says orbit i don't know much about orbit but she deserves more reads okay she deserves more purchases more reviews on goodreads please pick this up before i go i'll just tell you very quickly what i'm reading right now so I'm reading A Winter's Promise by Christelle Dabos. And I'm gonna DNF this, unfortunately, because I wanted to read this for so long. And now that I started it, I don't really like it, which is such a bummer. But I posted this on our podcast Instagram and someone replied, or replied, someone commented on the photo saying that they didn't like it at first either because of the writing style, which is the problem I'm having. It's very formal and yet, the content is very young, so I'm like, what is happening? But this person said that they felt the same way and then they got the audiobook and now they are hooked onto the series. So I think I'll just take a little breather and then try the audiobook and we'll see what happens. Because also, look at this cover. Doesn't that look interesting? Like, I want to know what's going on, but I just, I'm like 50 pages in and I really am not liking it and it's not because of the plot it's because of the style of writing so that's why i'm like oof i don't know but anyways so this is a dnf right now and i've also started this big malice by john gwynn this has been on my tbr for a while and i was very scared to start it because it is a huge book and it's like adult high fantasy and that as i've said many times makes me very like panicked about am I going to be able to read this and understand it am I smart enough to understand it you know crap I am smart enough to understand it and so far I'm enjoying it I'm still very early on I'm at page 52 so not much has happened yet but I'm liking it so far and I'm understanding it so go me <laughs> and then lastly I started a video on this and I don't know when I'm going to put it out because it's like a longer reading vlog but I started reading Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. I've seen the movie, or I saw the movie years ago. I loved it. I did not read the book, so I'm reading it now. And I'm only on page 38 because I've just been in a really weird reading mood right now. But I am doing a video about annotating a book in the book for the first time. So like, as you can see, I'm highlighting and writing, which I had a real hard time with at the beginning, but that's what the vlog is going to be about. Hopefully if I can get it all together, but uh, yeah, that's what I'm reading right now. And this video is crazy long. So that's going to be it for me today. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. I have some videos planned coming up. So I want to get back into a routine of posting regular content because I really like doing these videos and I want to make it a habit again. So I'm so sorry for the huge hiatus, but I am back and I will be posting. So I hope to see you. I won't see you, but I hope you stick around and watch these. That's fine if you don't, but yeah. So I just, I didn't want to post anything just to post. So that's why I just took a break because I think I just need to refresh after the craziness of the two shows I was a part of. So yeah, I'm back and I'm getting back into the reading groove and hopefully have some fun videos for you. So I hope you have a great day and I hope to see you next time. And I hope you pick up some good reads. I hope you don't read Guild because that was awful. <laughs> but anyways, I'll see you next time. Bye.